Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Why? Because we have covered it to spend meaningful moments with the master. And the best way to spend meaningful moments with the master is to listen to God speak to us in his word. We are in a series this entire week entitled No Fear. We're using the verb K-N-O-W, no fear. Get to know fear. And we need to know fear because fear can be healthy and it can be unhealthy. Our focus is on the six unhealthy fears that tend to paralyze us. And one of the fears that paralyzes us is the fear of failure, the fear of failure. Many people don't venture because they are afraid they're going to fail. So they keep life safe, they keep life routine, they don't want to step out into deep water <clears throat> for fear that I won't be able to survive. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. God is a God who helps to transform failure, our greatest failures, into really some of our greatest successes. Let's look at the Word of God has to say about failure. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16 says this, no matter how, many, how often honest people fall or fail, and you can be honest, do all the right things, and you can still fall. They always get up again, but the disaster destroys the wicked. So one of the signs that um, you're successful is not that you don't fail. It says honest people or good people fail. They fall. But the difference between average people and achieving people, average and achieving, it's not that achieving people don't fail. <laughs> Believe me, achieving people fail. They fall down. But what do you notice? They fall down, but they don't stay down. They get back up. And listen to me. Here's the, 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 the most important thing I can say about failure is this. It says, no matter how often honest people fall, they always get up again. And here's the good news. When those honest people, good people fall or fail and get back up again, they always get back up again better. In fact, it's a, it's a paradox. It's a serendipity that it is because they fail that they get back up again better. Which means that one of the reasons why we should not be afraid of failure is because we have not properly defined failure. In our minds, let's redefine what failure is. Failure is not falling down. We all do that. Failure is a refusal to get back up. It is feeling sorry for yourself and languishing in the ground and staying, saying, instead of saying, God, what can I learn from this situation? How can I be better as a result of this situation? And then you get back up. So you have to redefine failure. Let me ask you something. Is, is failure a mistake? Is failure the mistakes? Or is failure lessons? When I fail, have I made a mistake or have I learned a lesson? Uh, it was Thomas Edison who invented so many things, but he also said that there were a lot of things that he worked on that did not work, did not become a, a patented in invention of Edison. But you know what he said about those things that did not work? He said those things that did not work taught me lessons on what doesn't work. And sometimes God allows us to fail in order to perfect us so that we will find out what does not work, what we should not do. And you talk to anyone who has had success in any area, and I will show you that successful person, that achieving person is somebody who failed and learned from that failure. Now, anytime you're going to Anytime you're going to step out there on faith, you will more than likely fail. And when you fail, you're always going to have the critics who are going to say, you see, 
They shouldn't have done it. Oh, look at the mistake. Why did they, why did they start their business? See, they ain't all this debt. Uh, why did they do this, that, or the other? These are the critics. And critics, you know, you can't listen to the sidewalk supervisors and the critics. Uh, don't pay any attention to them because they're on the sidewalk. And those same folk, when you succeed, are the same folk who will be there cheering you on, acting like they were always with you. It is said that the Wright brothers, uh, when uh, they just had a dream and said, you know what, we're going to be the first people to fly in the air. And the critics said, you'll never get that plane up. And then, but, and, and they didn't. I mean, they were out there laughing, ha, 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 because they couldn't get that plane up. That's what the critics were saying. But then when they finally got it up, those same critics came back and said this, they'll never get it down. And those same critics who said they wouldn't get it up uh, and laughed because they couldn't get it up the first time are the critics who now are saying, yeah, I wouldn't get on it because they wouldn't get it down. And guess what they did? They got the plane down. And then those same critics who said they wouldn't get it up and won't get it down, those same critics right now at the airport purchasing a ticket on Delta to get on the plane. And there's a whole lot of critics who will say you won't make it. And then when God allows you to make it because you went through a series of failures and, dis and discovered uh, 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 what doesn't work, uh, those same critics are the ones who will always be right next to you saying, I knew them all along. I was with them all along. Listen, don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to venture out there because you are always going to grow as a result of failure and learning. I heard, uh, who was it? In fact, it was in his book. Uh, Coach Rick Pitino said this. Coach Rick Pitino said, failure is fertilizer. <laughs> failure is fertilizer. Now you think about that. What is fertilizer? Fertilizer is manure and it stinks. Nobody likes the manure, but endure the manure because failure is fertilizer, which is to say, as a result of the failure, something in you grows, something in you develops if you handle it right. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25 says this, <clears throat> it is dangerous to be concerned with others think of you, but if you trust the Lord, you are safe. Don't be concerned about what other people think about you. Don't be concerned about people saying you're too old or you're too inexperienced, or this is the wrong time to do this, or you'll never make it. Don't listen to the critics and the skeptics. It's dangerous to be concerned with what other people think about you. Go ahead, venture out in faith. You know the story. Jesus came to the disciples walking on water to get to the disciples. They were in the storm, and they'd been in this storm all night. And here comes Jesus walking on the water to get to the disciples. When Peter realized it was Jesus, Peter looked at Jesus and said, if that's you, bid me to come to you on the water. Notice he first got permission. He got permission. If he had stepped out of the boat without asking God first, then that would have been presumptuousness. But once Jesus said, come, if he had stayed in the boat, that would have been disobedience. So Jesus said to Peter's request to walk on the water, Jesus said, come, just one word, come. Now, had it been me, I would have said, okay, Jesus, you got to give me more. You got to tell me how you're going to suspend the laws of gravity so I can walk on water. What are you going to do with the fact that I've got feet and not fins? I'm a human. I'm not a fish. How are you going to keep me up on the water? But Jesus gave him no guarantees. He just said, come. And Peter stepped out of that boat and put his foot, not on the water, but on a promise, come. And as he was walking to Jesus, the Bible says, and there was a wind that blew. And Peter surveyed the winds, took a, a tabulation, he did, a, a quantifiable, quantifiable analysis 
of the wind and, and the pressure. And he began to analyze it and he began to sink. But he had enough sense to call on Jesus. And he called on the Lord and he prayed a very short prayer because sometimes you don't have time to pray a long prayer. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached and grabbed Peter and walked him back to the boat. And when they got in the boat, that's when the storm ceased. Now, there are a lot of critics who will say, Peter, you should have done this. You know, you shouldn't have took your ass over Jesus. I can see some of those other disciples. And Peter should have said to them, look, at least I was walking on the water. You stayed in the boat. Don't listen to the folk who stay in the boat. Don't be afraid of failure. God will rescue you. Call out to the Lord. The Lord will pick you up. And as a result of the failure, you will learn some lessons. Let me read the scripture one more time. Proverbs 24, verse 16, as we close, says, no matter how often honest people fall. So you're not only going to fail once, you're going to fail over and over again. But this is the difference between average people and achieving people. You fail, but you get back up again. You fail in your marriage. You get back up again. You ask God to help you learn something. You get back up again and you, you move on with your life. You fail in business, but you get back up again. You don't stay down. You get back up again. And the good news is this, is that when you get back up again, you will learn some lessons that will make you stronger, better, and wiser the second time you get back up again. A whole lot of people are jealous of, of achieving people. You get jealous of somebody who is achieving. Your problem is this. You see their glory. You don't know their story. You don't know how many times they failed, how many risks they took that did not come to pass. But like we talked about yesterday, about commitment. They were not afraid to be committed and God honored their commitment. Are you going to stay in the boat for the rest of your life? Or are you going to get out of the boat and be adventurous and walk on some water? Don't be afraid to fail. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And help us, oh God, to know fear. Know the fear of the future. Uh, know the fear of commitment. And yes, know even the fear of failure so that it will not master us but we will master it. Do not let us be average people hanging out in the boat with other average people. Help us to be adventurous people, even if we have to be like Peter and do it alone. Lord, life is too short and death is too sure not to do what you've called us to do. Help us to seize the day and to seize opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for being with us today on another Powerful Point to Ponder. This is Wednesday, and tonight we will have Bible study. And I hope you'll join us at ssclive.org. Uh, and uh, the pre-worship show begins at 6.30. And it's always so informational and enlightening. So you join us at 630 and then we'll start worship at seven o'clock. And uh, if you need prayer, maybe you need prayer, please call us uh, here at 502-583-6798. Or if you have found your church home, you say, you know what, I want to connect with St. Stephen. I want to be a part of the online campus, a digital disciple. Then contact us, email us at info at ssclive.org. Uh, God bless you real good. Uh, see you tonight. And as we depart, as we always say, stay safe, stay sane. And if you can't, stay home. God bless you.